Hey friends, we're going to talk about turntable maintenance in this video. Real quick, this is a Sony PS2700. When I get these, every one of these I've ever got, and I, I think I've probably been through about maybe six, six, eight of them, something like that, um, the spindle seized. So I usually have to adjust, sorry, I've got some music going on in the background. Need something, noise. Okay, everybody else has gone to bed. All right, to, when you get these, first get these, this is gonna be really, really hard to move. And so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna lift this off, okay? And uh, first you wanna check, you wanna make sure that you have the right plate uh, because the plate might be part of the issue on maybe why it's not working. I should say Sony on it, it should be pretty heavy. I think these are about two pounds, four ounces. And so your spindle will not move. It'll just be like stuck. Like you'll have to like work pretty hard at uh, getting it to move even a little bit. Now, you don't want to damage the spindle at all when you're getting it loose. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to grab some of this uh, kitchen, uh, I don't know, drawer liner. Uh, it's just this nice rubbery stuff. And you'll see how I've cut off little strips of it here. You'll want to cut off a little strip of it and then wind it around this and then take a pair of pliers and uh, just lightly work it back and forth until you get a little bit of movement. Once you get a little bit of movement, it's pretty easy to just continue working it from there. Now, if you're stuck on a gear, uh, as this one was, so this one was actually stuck right here when I got it. Um, there was nothing I could do but go ahead and break that gear right there. So uh, this is uh, kind of my sacrificial unit here. Uh, this one has served as a parts unit now for about five other players, but it still has enough to function. It's a survivor. All right, so uh, once you have got uh, the spindle loose, it's going to move just a little bit, um, maybe more than that. It shouldn't but there is going to be a screw underneath that holds it. Now, some people will say that's the oiler screw, but really it's a set screw that keeps it from jumping out. And so when you get one of these or any other unit that you're having this issue with, you know what, actually on to, to, to talk, just divert for just a second, tangent, uh, a lot of units that I've run into have uh, three or four screws holding this down and um, as a result, all you have to do is just unscrew these screws that are around here and it just kind of comes right out. Now I did run into one, I think it was a dual where it got me all excited cause I'm like, oh, this is going to be easy to maintenance. And, and I undid the screws and I went to go pull it and the ground wire was connected to the bottom of it. So I still had to open it up. But anyways, all right. So, uh, your bottom is probably going to have, um, this one should have been covered. I've used the cover for another unit on this one. So you'll have to remove the bottom cover and that will expose this here. And this looks just gnarly, just, it's just old lubricant, but there is a little, whoa, let's not do that. You see this little screw right here? Okay, that one is not an original. That one is a replacement, but it should be a flat head and you'll need a fine little flathead screwdriver to get in here and just give it a good twist. Okay, now this one is untwisted. Now you can choose to take it all the way out. I just back it off a couple of turns. Um, you know, it's probably actually better to take it out and set it to the side so it does not go missing. And maybe just set her here to the side. All right, now that we have that, out, this will actually be free to move completely. So the issue with a lot of these and why they end up sinking over time, or even during shipping in the case that I'm making this video, is that this little uh, part down here actually has a little rubber piece. And actually it's probably hard plastic to start with, but it has a little buddy down in there. And let me try and uh, get this one, coax this one out here. All right, we'll get some, we'll get some, uh, 
lubricant here and put it on the bottom and see if we can make contact and get it to come out. Yep, there it is. Okay, so this is what you should see is like some kind of rubber uh, action like this. And it's just all cracked. It's just, it's had better days. It's shot basically. And then this, so you can see that it's got, it's actually been compressed over time. And in this case, um, I knew that this one was shot. And so I added this little rubber O-ring and you can get these little rubber O-rings at your hardware store. Uh, usually they are for sink and um, I guess sinks. I don't know. It's going to be in the plumbing section, but I put those in there and drop her back down in there. And that gives me adequate space. I got goo all over my hands here. And as a result, the platter is going to float um, where it needs to. So these players, now interestingly enough, uh, Sony was kind of thinking this through and I think they knew that they were eventually going to see the platter come down because they put these little metal brackets right here. Let me see, maybe I'm talking crap here. Let me, yeah, I don't see why these dudes are here. Okay, they're there for the thing right there. Okay, I was gonna say maybe they put those spacers there on purpose to keep the platter from actually making contact with the paint, but that's not the case. Okay, so these are there to hold the motor down. All right, well, so much for Sony thinking ahead. <clears throat> Well, they really weren't thinking ahead, too, because they, they look at this. They, they knew they were going to make PlayStations eventually in 1970s, didn't they know? Right. Okay. Anyways, rant. All right. So even though this is still loose, I can, I can set it up to where. There we go. Okay. Now let's take my spacer out and let's listen and see if we can get it to, to scrape. Gosh dang it. Now i got to get more lubricant out. You're silly, come on. All right, you wanna keep from adding too much lubricant because it will create space down there and it'll eventually ooze up. And I'll bet that's in what happened to this one is I put enough lubricant in there that it created a, a space and as it went through shipping, it, uh, it lost the lubricant spacing stuff get that you understand what I'm talking about I'm probably not making any sense I'm probably just rambling on here aren't I okay anyway so I took my little my new little washer spacer out and now I'm getting some odd behavior see look at that you see how my my lobe yeah this is exactly probably what's happening is this is setting so low that it's actually catching this piece that that normally would be setting back like this, the auto return mechanism, but it's actually coming in. Let me see if I can get this even closer because this is exactly probably what's happening. You'll see that that little lobe is catching on those, okay? And then when we have that little spacer in there, let's put it on. Come here, buddy. There we go. Okay. When we have that spacer in there, it's actually going to, let's, no, come on. Why are you doing that? Don't do that. Don't be silly. All right, so now that it's seated back, it's actually going to clear it. You see? Okay, so that, that spacer right there, just getting a little bit of space in there, will solve both the auto return issue and the scrapingness. Now, what we originally were going to do was we were going to pull this out Gosh darn it, now I gotta do this again. I'm just batting 100 here. You know what it is. It's this turntable really wants me to fix it so that it can play. All right. This is the one where, uh, this is the turntable where I, I, I learned how to fix the, um, the, the up and down. This one has way, way too thick of, uh, lubricant in it for the uh, tone arm lift and lower okay all right so now that we have this down let's get it to a place where it can actually run and let's see if we get scraping 
All right, there's our scraping. That is exactly what we expected to happen. So looks like by adding this here little itty bitty little spacer here. Oh my goodness, all kinds of stuff came up that time. Okay, there should be a little red. I think this is like an electrical spacer, um, like a washer, an electrical washer. I don't know, that's the original one that was in there, but there's a little uh, C-clip at the bottom on the underside. So on this side, there's a little C-clip that you can get to, and if you can press it, you can pull it all the way out, and you can actually clean the entire thing out, and it'll be all, all wonderful and goodness. <clears throat> Good stuff. Okay, so now let's see here. All right, now it's going to catch that. All right, okay, there we go. We are back to operational. Now, I think I would imagine another thing you could do if you wanted to is to use a metal washer. I don't think it's going to cause any harm. I, I don't, I've not used them. I like the little rubber spacers because they won't, um, I don't like metal to metal in case the lubricant goes, goes to crap down there. Cause I can imagine the sourcing parts for these is, I don't know, this part, you are better off just buying one, four parts and taking the good parts out of it. Kind of like this one. All right. So now that you have all of this, uh, done, uh, you do at least need to set this screw back in there. You don't have to tighten it. Actually, if you do tighten it all the way down, it'll actually hit the spindle and keep the spindle from moving. So you do you do have to set it in there loosely. And I would go ahead and put it in because otherwise your lubricant's just going to dry out. The lubricant is in there. And you can use... So this is synthetic 100 lubricant that you can get at any hobby store. Um, let me show you the bottle. It's, I think it's Lucas. No, it's not. It's super lube. It's this stuff right here, ISO 100. Um, I just put it in these little needle bottles because I'm always needing to needle around. Um, get it? Needle? Needle bottles? Needle around? And then uh, dielectric grease. Uh, this is for cars, but um, it's the same stuff that you would use in, in any other. You want to use dielectric just in case the grease gets onto an electrical part. You, this will not turn into flames. And then this is the stuff for that. So now you know how to maintenance your spindle and hopefully that fixes whatever your issue was, if you had one. Um, the person I'm making this video for, I shipped them one of these PS 2700s and it arrived uh, scraping like the spacer had been compressed. And unfortunately, uh, Something, something went awry in shipping or packaging. I like to package these pretty tight because if they move around a lot, they'll get hurt. The other thing that could happen too is that that, that C-clamp came out of there, which we'll just figure that out. We'll, we'll figure out what size that little C-clip, not clamp, that little C-clip in here. We'll just figure out what size it is if we need to get a new one and get one at the hardware store. Um, I have an Ace Hardware that's just right around the corner. They always have what I need for these little turntables. So, pretty cool, cool, cool. Like, subscribe, thanks a lot for watching. Have a good evening, or day, or morning, or whatever time it is that you're watching this.